everyone, welcome to researchmd.com, another great presentation. Um, let me introduce myself. My name is Pramil Charyat. I'm a physician, program director, internal medicine residency, transitional residency in the United States, associate professor of medicine, two large medical schools. So our topic today, we're continuing our endocrinology series, a very, very important postpartum thyroiditis. Usually a lot of people miss it and the impact is huge. Negative relationship with the women. We just had a baby negative relationship with the family, with the baby, and all of this uh, is heavily affected, okay? So let's get into our topic today, postpartum thyroiditis. First, the first thing we have to do is to define what is postpartum thyroiditis, okay? It's an inflammatory autoimmune disorder. Remember, it's an autoimmune and um, causing thyroid dysfunction in the first postpartum year, okay? The first year after delivery, and the women were typically use thyroid before pregnancy. That that means they were didn't have any thyroid problem before, and then it, they should exclude Graves' disease. So uh, anti-TSH receptor antibodies will be absent in those people. Okay. So now you know, it can. What are the other names for like uh, um, you know, postpartum thyroiditis? You got painless thyroiditis. You can have lymphocytic thyroiditis with the spontaneously resolving hyperthyroidism. Mean, it's actually most of the pathophysiology based on this uh, lymphocytic destruction. Okay. And now look at the epidemiology and the prevalence is around 7 to 8 percent and etiology if you look at it the what are the people with the high risk let's look at very high risk if they have previous episode of postpartum thyroiditis they are extremely high risk if they have Hashimoto thyroiditis they are also very high risk and the other people in the high risk you have type 1 diabetes you got um, a, a positive thyroid peroxidase antibodies. Any type, if you have an autoimmune disease like SLE, those uh, rheumatoid arthritis, you're also very high risk, okay? Um, there is like, uh, if you have gestational diabetes, there is high risk, and family history of thyroid disease, or for you and family history of autoimmune diseases, so you have to be extremely careful. And these are the, where, the high risk of people. Um, you should be extremely careful. They could have postpartum thyroiditis. Okay, let's look at like pregnancy, normal pregnancy, what happened because of the estrogen level goes up. There's decreased metabolic metabolism of thyroid binding globulin, okay, that will, de that, will that will make like increase free T4 and free T3, okay, and also what happens the TSH level also goes down because you got beta SCG that can cross react with the TSH receptor on the thyroid, remember that, and then usually like there's like an immunosuppression going on in the pregnancy period, right, and then what happens is like uh, or thyroid antibodies decrease throughout the pregnancy, See, that's a normal phenomenon. Now let's look at the pathophysiology. This is pretty much similar to what happened in the Hashimoto's like autoimmune thyroid, thyroiditis. There's a lot of lymphocytic destruction. So then what happens is like after the pregnancy, there's, you know, during the pregnancy, we know there's immunosuppression. All of a sudden immunosuppression is gone and then you can have something immune rebound phenomena and then you got breakdown of the self tolerance and induction of thyroid autoimmunity, again, autoimmunity. Okay, and then there is like uh, first you have to look at the t what happened in the CD4 uh, the T helper one cell that activate macrophages, IF and gamma, and then there's a lot of thyrocyte injury in this group. They can also cause like plasma cell antithyroid antibodies, FC receptor natural killer cell activation, and you can have antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity. So one thing you have to say, it's a lymphocytic pretty much distraction. Okay, now we have nice graph over here, like what happens, you know. You, there's so many, I mean, you can present 50% of the people can be like hypothyroidism. That's the most common. Let's look at this graph. You got thyroid function on this side and months since delivery. Again, we said the one here, right? So what happened, the first one, that like you can have this, uh, um, persistent hypothyroidism, probably that's around like 50% of the people. Everything stays low. And then you can have like transient hypothyroidism. You can have transient hyperthyroidism. Okay, and now there's some term like a, yeah, destructive hypothyroiditis um, with the increased free 4 and T3, and then it becomes hypothyroid phase. Okay, so those are the main thing. And remember, if something I remember, 50% of them it could have been like hypothyroid features. Now, let's look at on this category over here. How do you diagnose the patient? Very important to get the history to find out 
what is going on in this patient, okay? And then you check the TSH. Which patient you should check for TSH? You know, the high-risk people. We already said, like, all these people over here, you need to check. Just go back 6 to 12 weeks after postpartum. There's, like, postpartum depression, milk production difficulty, symptom consistent with the hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism. And 3 to 6 months after postpartum, you have to be checking TSH, okay? So any of these people we talk about the high-risk, you should also check. TSH. So, if you are in there in the thyrotoxic phase, what will you find? In the thyrotoxin, there is going to be decreased TSH and increased free T3 and free T4. What do you have to do? I mean, if it is asymptomatic, no treatment is necessary, okay? You can check TSH every four to six weeks and it should be fine. Now, if they become symptomatic, then you have to give like propranolol to, that is the treatment for that patient. Now, then they become euthyroid phase. At that time, you have to check the TSH every two months. Um, and then you do that again, you continue that for one year, okay? The next you got hypothyroid phase. In that hypothyroid phase, you know how it happens, right? There's increased TSH and decreased free 3 and T4. So if they are asymptomatic and the TSH is, um, I mean, if the T there is increased TSH and if it is like less than six months, you don't need to treat it, okay? At the same time, if it is symptomatic or if you're pregnant or attempting to get pregnant or breastfeeding and if, the if there is increased risk, CSH is greater than six months and then you have to treat with the levothyroxine, okay? When you treat with the levothyroxine, you treat for like six to, after six to 12 months, you try to wean it off by halving the dose and you measure TSH six to eight weeks after the, the dose restriction. And do not wean if they're like breastfeeding and they're trying to get pregnant, you have to continue the same dose is important. At the same time, in the asymptomatic people, they remain in euthyroid phase, you measure the TSH every year postpartum. Okay, so just go back and see the, just the, evaluate the diagnosis and treatment. The first thing is always get a proper history, very, very important. And then check TSH. If they're high risk group, we already talked about it, especially if they have postpartum depression, six to 12 weeks, and milk production problems, symptom consistent with the hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism, three, six months postpartum. First, you look at the thyrotoxic phase, there's increased T4 and increased free T4 and increased uh, free T3, right? And decreased TSO is asymptomatic, no treatment, symptomatic euphorphan or euthyroid phase, check TSH every two months. And in the hypothyroid phase, you have to come back and you have to treat. If they are, I mean, if they're symptomatic, you have to treat. If it's asymptomatic, you don't have to treat. If they're in the euthyroid phase, you, know, you measure the TSH every year postpartum. Okay, to make sure everything. So if they are in the hypothyroid phase, you can do symptomatic, um, you treat them. If they're pregnant, you treat, attempting to get pregnancy, breastfeeding, and all of that so you need to treat, okay? And then you try to treat and then slowly wean after like six to 12 months, but if they are breastfeeding and they continue, and they're trying to get pregnant, don't try to wean at all, okay? So let's go back and summarize like one more one more time. So it's an autoimmune disease, postpartum thyroiditis. Number one, it's a lymphocytic infiltration. That's the other thing we need to know. You need to make sure a patient did not have great disease because, you know, TSH receptor blocking antibodies would be absent in those people. Very important to know, right? And then we talk about the etiology. What are the high-risk people in this? You have to say, like, previous episode of postpartum thyroiditis, you know, Hashimoto, they are the highest risk for developing postpartum thyroiditis. And they have diabetes, hepatitis C. They already got positive thyroid peroxidase antibody. And they have any other autoimmune diseases like SLE and that make you, like, high susceptible to have postpartum thyroiditis and then it's like if you look at the pathophysiology is very important no, it's like well, number one there's immune rebound phenomena and there is like a lot of lymphocytic activity right here you got th1 cell cd4 uh, activating the macrophage thyrocyte injury and then you got thyroid anti-thyroid antibodies coming in fc receptor activation of natural kills the killer cells and there is a lot of damage to the thyroid. And then we need to look at this graph, it's going to clearly tell us like what happened. You got thyroid function on uh, over here and months since delivery on the x axis, right? We have like, I mean, most of the remember it's like 50% of them in the hypothyroid phase. And look at the treatment, make sure you take the history, 
Make sure you check your TSH if they're on the high risk. And then you have this flow diagram right here, thyrotoxicosis phase. You got um, asymptomatic, you know, need to treat, but it becomes symptoms. You treat with the propranolol, and you get in the hypothyroid phase, asymptomatic again. You don't treat, and you become hypo. I mean, symptomatic and uh, pregnant or attempt to get pregnant or breastfeeding, you have to treat. And you treat it for six to 12 months and then slowly try to wean it off, okay? Again, very, very important topic which a lot of people miss, which are a huge impact of women all across the world. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with another presentation soon. Please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.